it's been, it's been such a gift for me to discover um, something about myself that's just completely settled and at ease, um, regardless of what's going on, regardless of where I am or what I'm thinking or who I'm with or how I'm feeling. Or, and um, this is the result of the, the Balance View training and participating in it now for some years. And I, I really, I, I really, really appreciate the, the simplicity and the directness of the terminology that's used here. Just having a, a, a basic understanding of the terminology in itself um, can clarify many things. And I also see that as I become um, increasingly familiar with the terminology and actually then recognizing that as being the basis of my own experience, that it just opens up uh, a, a deeper and deeper um, sense of ease and also a more powerful sense of um, capability of being able to deal with life. And the first term that you'll hear in the training um, and the, at these meetings quite a lot is data. And um, it's, just a, it's just a brilliant term because it just means anything that you can think, feel, sense, experience, perceive, describe, um, thoughts, emotions, sensations, um, and people, places, things, you know, all of these descriptions we had about our own experience. Um, and just to simplify all of that, to say it's just all data. And it just all has this same fundamental property of arising spontaneously, and then we experience it, and then it self-releases naturally. And the other term that you'll hear is open intelligence. And open intelligence is any intelligence that you can identify right now. So what's looking through your eyes, what's hearing these words, what knows you're sitting on the chair. And you can identify it really directly just by stopping thinking for a moment. And just recognize what remains. Even if you pause your thinking just for an instant, there's something that's still there. There's something that's aware of everything that's going on. There's an alertness, a cognizance. So this is open intelligence. It is your intelligence as it already is, wide open like a clear sky. And within this intelligence, all the data are streaming. So if you look at your own experience, you'll see that there's a never-ending stream of experience, of descriptions, of thoughts, emotions, sensations, you know, feelings in the body and sounds that we hear around us. And it's all just happening in this completely spontaneous way. And what I found challenging in my life was that somewhere along the way I had learned that I needed to manage or control this experience, the stream of data, the, the content of my mind. And that this content or this experience should look in some ways and it shouldn't look in other ways. So for example, it should look happy um, and it shouldn't look anxious. And um, and I'm not quite, I, I mean, I, I do know where that came from. It just came from my upbringing, you know, my surroundings, media, friends and family, just picking up on the ideas and the ways that other people were living their lives. And um, this whole idea that some experience was really worthwhile. Um, sometimes those might be called peak experiences or adventurous experiences and other experiences um, weren't worthwhile. <coughs> Uh, the one that always, always comes to me is going shopping in the supermarket. <laughs> and um, so with these ideas in place and these assumptions about what I need to be doing with my life, then I set on about living my life. And so that means that I put all of my time and my energy into trying to feel happy and trying to hold on to happy and positive feelings. And then I put the rest of my energy into trying to avoid things that I've learned are negative or that I shouldn't be feeling, like anxiety or loneliness or sadness or irritation or anger or desire sometimes. And, um, and then also with these other ideas that um, you know, I, I should be living an exciting life. So that's another positive description. You know, I should find things exciting. And, um, and I shouldn't find things mundane or ordinary or normal. Those, those are things to be avoided. And so with all of these ideas, um, 
I just set about my life and, and I tried to do my best and I tried to um, live a happy, exciting, um, positive life and sometimes I was successful and I got quite skilled at that. But no matter how skillful I got at arranging my life and trying to control my experience, some mornings I would just wake up and it would be a feeling of complete hollowness and emptiness and meaninglessness and hopelessness and uh, and it was I, it left me feeling really confused because the day before I'd been climbing a mountain and you know having incredibly beautiful thoughts and loving everybody and I'd wake up the next morning and it would just all seem completely pointless and so then that seemed to be, well, then I need to work really hard at finding out what's the problem. Why am I feeling this pointlessness or hopelessness or depression? Or and looking into all of the reasons and trying to find techniques to manage this experience. And um, I, probably like most of you, I had lots of different techniques to try and manage my experience. Some of which were, um, I could have called meditative or, or that kind of practice. Um, and others that... I definitely wouldn't have called meditative, but they were still me trying to manage my experience, um, like smoking and drinking and um, distracting myself with various things from these feelings of negativity, or numbing them down and, and suppressing them so I didn't have to face them. And so that's the way I lived my life, but it just always felt like there was something missing. It didn't matter how many mountains I climbed, how many ecstatic experiences I had, how many incredible relationships. And there was just always a sense of so just something missing. And even when it was going really well, I knew that it wasn't going to last. You know, I couldn't stay on the top of the mountain. I couldn't stay in bed with my partner forever. And even if I did, at some point, we'd have to start to talk about things. And <laughs> And um, <laughs> so, but then, but what was it? What was missing? W what was missing? And, and I looked in so many places for that information. Um, and then it was only when I came to the Balance View training and um, I was given this introduction to the nature of mind to see that there was something about me that was always present, that was completely stable and was always accessible and reliable. And when I did access it, there was a sense of relief and openness and a clarity of mind that was really um, intriguing for me and, and really uh, magnetizing. I wanted more of it. And so you've had that introduction of just to stop thinking. But if you, if you do that again and you just again just allow everything to be as it is, whatever you're thinking, feeling or sensing, just, just stop describing it any further. You can just, again, notice this alertness that even though we noticed it ten minutes ago for the first time, it never gone anywhere. It was still the basis of everything that you thought and felt and sensed in that intervening period. But all that happens is that the focus then switches back into the data, into all of the thoughts, emotions and sensations and trying to make sense of those. And so this really simple practice of short moments of just shifting the focus into this openness of perception, the open intelligence that's looking, that's experiencing, that's feeling, that's sensing. And then repeating that for short moments as you go throughout your everyday. Everyday life is your, is your training ground. So you don't need to um, have a special set of circumstances or particular thoughts or feelings. You can test this out and practice it wherever you are. And every time I did that, I just would stop the describing and I would recognize this alertness, this openness, and just acknowledge it. And first of all, there was a, a relief from the um, incessant need to try and understand everything, this kind of sense of urgency that I, I just needed to do a bit more and then it would all make sense, or I do something else, think about it a bit more and suddenly it would all fall into place, or be a little bit more productive and then I could relax. And actually what I saw with this practice was that I could have this sense of completion, this sense of satisfaction, this sense of blissful ease wherever I was and whatever I was doing, whether I was really busy or whether I was doing nothing at all. And um, not only that, but the clarity of this perception, this total openness of mind, was also available. 
So I felt more relaxed, but I also could see everything much more clearly. And this was because I wasn't caught up in the fog of descriptions and just thinking about everything. And then somebody would say something and how does that fit into what I think and do I like it? And, you know, it's just what am I going to have for dinner? And oh, no, I don't feel so well. And it's just it's endless, incessant flow of descriptions. And so just to relax again for a short moment and allow them to be exactly as they are and identify the same open intelligence. And then I could see really clearly just how to proceed in that moment. And this was tapping into this innate power to see what would be of most benefit. And I could see very quickly that it wasn't of most benefit for me to stay completely wrapped up in all of these descriptions, these assumptions about what I needed to do with my life, and to think that I was going to get somewhere with them. Because I tried that for 35 years when I met the training. And... Um, it, it was exhausting. It was exhausting and never got me where I really wanted to be, that sense of being completely comfortable with myself, knowing why I'm here and what my purpose of being here is and how I can live in open-hearted ease with the people around me. You know, it's just this, this is what I wanted and I knew it was possible, but how do you do it? And so the short moments was a great um, insight into this open relaxed ease and the way that I could relate with openness and I could just just by integrating this when the thoughts and emotions came up I found myself being more available for other people I naturally wasn't so completely self-obsessed and self-absorbed because the thoughts about myself I could relax with now I didn't have to reference everything back to me and think about how I related to it or what it meant to me or my past history or all of these ideas that I picked up along the way, this relaxed potency was actually what I'd been looking for. In all of my adventurous experiences, in all of my blissful states, it was that sense of just complete openness that was really what I was looking for. And in this practice and in this training, you will discover that there is a systematic approach where you can train this up and train your ability to access this wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And the short moments is a great way to start. But then we have a whole, a whole package, a whole educational program that will really allow you to integrate this with all aspects of your life. And to see everything, including the ideas about being an observer, perhaps observing our thoughts, that this also, this sense of being an observer, is just a data stream appearing within the vastness of open intelligence.